first question. How did you start playing the flute? Okay, so uh, I started playing the flute because originally I wanted to play piano. <laughs> so from the time I was really small, I always wanted to play piano. And if I went over to anybody's house and they had a piano, so I was like the worst play date ever. So age four, I would just sit and play someone's piano. That was it, end up. So, um, and we didn't have a piano at home and you know, piano being very large piece of furniture. So my dad said to me, um, you know, when I was that small, he was like, when you're older, you can play the flute. And so not anticipating that I would like hang on to that little piece of information in my little four year old fist. Right. So um, so I I waited and waited and I would ask all the time. And my mom finally went to the music store to get me a flute and instead came home with a recorder because, of course, you realize like a flute is an investment. And then finally, when I was 12, I registered for band and there was a lottery for the flute. So I actually had to win the lottery. And it was it was a huge moment, right? Because I've been waiting since I'm four to play the flute. So I did. I won the flute lottery. And that was that. I started playing the flute in band, grade seven band. And then I, I begged for That's lessons. Great too. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> okay. okay. Um, the second question is, what is your practice routine? Uh, practice routine is um, always a warm up. So I I have a really set warm up that I like to revisit because I'm um, having things that I do play uh, the, similarly every day lets me feel in my body what needs to adapt or what is different or you know how's the breathing working or how's this feeling. So um, I usually I do a low tone exercise to start. Then I do full range scales. Then I do uh, art, some articulation. So I do a single tonguing exercise that I've done since I said with Shelly Young when I was in high school. I do a single tonguing exercise. Um, then I do uh, typically an exercise for speed, like a Tafnel Gobert, a little, you, you know, the number, number one or number two. Uh, then I do my long tones. So I let myself kind of warm up before I do my full beefy long tones. I do my long tones so that yeah. I feel like they aren't the first thing that I do so that I'm really listening to my sound. And um, so I do that. And then I do my double tonguing workout. And then after that, I do whatever it is that I might be working towards. So, you know, whatever repertoire I'm learning, um, I always work in a study. So there's always a study that I'm playing because I think studies are awesome and, and um, fun. And yeah, that would be that would be my routine. Brilliant. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great. Um, the best thing you've learned from a mentor. Okay, well, oh my gosh, the competition is high. I've had amazing mentors. I'll tell you the one that pops up to me right now is um, that uh, no matter how amazing you are, you're never satisfied. There's always gonna be this little part of you that like is just reaching for that little bit more. And I'll just tell a, a quick story of, of that coming to mind. So I was very lucky in, um, when I was at Indiana University, uh, Jacques Zone, who is an uh, amazing flutist, he now teaches in Geneva in Switzerland, and um, you know he's young talent at that point, so he just left the Concert Gabau as principal, and he, I think he was only 25 or 26, and he was very cute. Anyways, but um, so he was playing his first recital at Indiana, and we all went, and I was, I, I mean, I didn't even know what to say. I've it was exquisite. It was beautiful on I no words. And I had my lesson first thing the next morning. And I wanted to acknowledge, like, I didn't even know how to say, wow, I really loved your recital, right? Because it's, it, it felt almost like untouchable. Like I'm not even allowed to say, <laughs> but I, I just, I finally, I'm like, Oh, um, you know, I, I really, I really, I really enjoyed your recital last night. And, and he said, Oh, mm. Yes. And he had his little Dutch accent, you know, he's like, I, I just, I felt like I couldn't get into my sound. And my jaw just hung open. And I was like, Oh, par pardon? 
Uh, right? Like, uh, I was just like, I've never heard anything so exquisite in my whole life. And that fell short to you. And it was this moment of like, okay, I guess that never goes away. <laughs> mm. or, you know, that reaching for always just a little bit more, a little bit more. And, and it was a really good lesson to sort of make peace with that feeling, right? right. It's like, I'm going to have to make peace with that feeling. I try to make peace. Like, what are you... It's, it's been, you know, I, I guess I hold that I, I hold that um, story from Jacques, I really do, because it, it was such a profound moment of realization for me, like to hear such a genius express that, and that from that it became such like a human expression, like that's, that's mm -hmm. the human in us, you know, and and then if if that's his experience and um you know we all share that experience to somewhat it made it okay that's uplifting yeah that's lovely yeah, yeah. so Great. yeah thank you for that that's really good um what is your favorite music to play favorite to play music? yeah mm -hmm. okay all right well you know what and again I, the answer can sometimes be different on a different day, but what I will say is um, what I'm enjoying so much right now is I do uh, at the end of teaching yoga, I do improvisations on alto flute and I play whatever I want. And this was a huge thing for me right in the beginning. Like I thought, okay, really, to be quite honest, I was trying to get hired by the yoga studios. And so I was like, I have a flute. I'll bring my flute. It was like kind of a hook to get me in there. And then I, all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do what I said now and improvise something. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> hmm. So, um, you know, it was uh, all of a sudden I, I just sort of had plunged myself into this world. But what I find it's, uh, what it's done for me, first of all, is uh, I just use my flute to express whatever I feel in that moment and whatever I want to gift in that moment. And no one is sitting listening to me like in an audition or in this really stressful situation where you, you feel this almost distance, you know, where you're, you're trying to be a certain way and it's got to be perfect, perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it just it feels like getting back to the expression of music kind of this just like heart to heart sort of feeling not to get all cheesy but i'm also kind of cheesy so um that i would say is deeply fulfilling to me right now i really appreciate it as much as i love the classical repertoire and the world like that has been a really um a, a shift for me you know of like very freeing right yeah um, so you've been doing yoga as a teacher for a mm -hmm. while as well, is that right? Yes, right. Yeah, years, yes, yeah. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, so I've, and I've really, um, obviously coming to it as a musician, uh, it's, it, it's a different perspective, right? And I had to take care of different things. Like, I'm not going to load my wrists in an unhealthy way because I, I need to work, right? Like, stuff like that. And just how to how to move and how to really tailor it towards, like, a, a musician's specific needs in some ways. And, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, well, I'm, can you share performance advice? So, if you're going to a performance. Okay, so getting ready for performance, uh, my biggest piece of advice. Okay, first of all, practice. That seems that's like level one, right? Practice for your performance. Mm -hmm. um, and second of all, practice your mental preparation. So I would say that that's the part that gets often neglected. It's like we practice, practice, practice um, the, the music, our fingers, you know, uh, and then we don't prepare ourselves mentally. And it's so huge instead of so I'm always one that says instead of getting to the performance and you're at the performance and you imagine you're at home. Well, we're not at home like you deeply know that. <laughs> so you can try to think the whole time I'm just it's just like being at home and it's it's not. And I find it much more useful to prepare for the performance by when you're practicing imagining you're in performance because you're doing that conjuring that um imagining from a place of being grounded and calm in your own space yeah and 
that that for me is very important preparation. Like I see everything. I see myself walking out on stage. I see the audience. I try to see the lighting and I really prepare myself um, for that experience so that I'm not suddenly dealing with the mental load of it, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, without, um, without that kind of base also. That makes a lot of sense. So explore. And um, Kim, this is their last, this is the last question. Okay. Um, can you tell us something that nobody knows about you or something that's not flute related? It can be anything. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. I know I'm a pretty, like I, I'm a pretty open book in, in a lot of ways. Um, maybe, so this might surprise people because as you can see, I'm pretty chatty mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, it might surprise people to know that, um, one of my favorite things to do is go on silent retreat and that I find that, um, like deeply resetting and calming and, uh, and that, yes, uh, going for, you know, five days without speaking to anybody is, uh, fantastic. And that often surprises people because they, they don't think of me as being the type, you know, like, and, and, uh, yeah, so there, there we go. That's maybe a little surprising tidbit. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that was, that was lovely. Um, and very informative. So those are all the questions that we have. Um, okay. Um, that's, that is pretty much it. I look forward to seeing you in person. Live. In person, me too. Take Thank care. You. Thank okay. you.